So, George, some people have suggested that uh, um, the announcement by the Business Roundtable and the World Economic Forum and people like Larry Fink represent a turning point in the stakeholder v shareholder debate. But in an article you suggested you don't see the debate ever being resolved or not being resolved very soon anyway. Um, I just wonder whether you still hold that view and whether you can just explain your thinking behind it. Well, I think it's actually been useful to think about what the purpose of the company is and what are the ingredients that, that lead to, to company success over time. And certainly stakeholders and stakeholder relationships are, are part of that. I think that that's, that's, that's important to recognize, particularly coming from the United States where there's been traditionally the very strong shareholder primacy perspective on things. Um, having said that, I, I actually do think that this is a resolvable question. Um, and, but it's not necessarily, you know, we're, sometimes we're tempted to pick a side. Are you on the shareholder primacy side or are you on the stakeholder capitalism side? And I think why I'm taking part in this discussion today is because of the fact that uh, it probably is a false dichotomy depending on how you present it. Uh, it's not just a question of picking a side. If I'm going to pick a side, ultimately, I think we need to pick the size, the side of the company itself and its own health and sustainability over time. And for a company to be sustainable over time, it will need to generate returns for shareholders. It will need to protect its creditors, but it will also need to ensure that it has healthy and robust relationships with its stakeholders. Because if any of these pieces are missing, then there's gonna be a problem with regard to the company and its ability to thrive, its ability to generate new capital, and its ability to, to create products and services and to serve its stakeholder needs. So I think that the, uh, if we think of in terms of a dichotomy or even a dialectic between the thesis of shareholder primacy and the antithesis of stakeholder primacy, I would posit that company primacy may be the way to resolve this, this potential conundrum. Okay, great. And well, just in terms of the, the business round table statement, um, uh, as we've spoken about brief, briefly recently, uh, Harvard Law School professors, um, Lucien Babchuk and uh, Roberto uh, Tallarita um, have heavily criticized the, the statement that was made, suggesting that in their view, it's largely a rhetorical public relations move rather than the harbinger of meaningful change. They say stakeholder interests will only be considered to the extent that doing so serves the interests of shareholders, something that they reckon even Milton Friedman would have approved of. What do you make of that, that kind of view? Well, I think the, the, art, the piece by Bebchuk and his partner uh, that you refer to I think it does challenge uh, the sincerity of, of, the, of the statement that's being made. Uh, I'm not gonna put myself in the debate and claim that I have any clearer idea of what the motivations for that statement were than, than he does or the, the people who authored it. But I think that the, the challenges that, that is brought out by that piece is that if you don't have a clear focus on a commercial objective and a commercial objective to generate returns for shareholders, there may be, it almost, you, you may be lacking some form of important guidance or leadership. And in, in terms of, uh, if, you, if, you're not, if you're not accountable to somebody, you're, you're accountable to no one. And in that context, I think his, the concern that's being expressed is that ultimately this would default towards companies managing themselves for the benefit of their managers and this is potentially to the exclusion of the interest, not only of stakeholders, but also of investors. Okay, so, I mean, just from, um, you represent the International Corporate Governance Network um, as head of policy. I'm just wondering, does the ICGN have a policy view on this particular topic of the shareholder v stakeholder debate, um, or were the views that you just expressed your own views? We haven't spelled it out quite in that way. Uh, we, we are comfortable, uh, if you look at our global governance principles, you'll see that we think that the company is, I, I would refer ultimately to the guidance that we see in the UK Companies Act Section 172, 
where director's duties are defined as uh, trying to promote the long-term success of the company itself. And they quickly add for the benefit of its members, its shareholders, but also having regard for uh, stakeholder, a wide range of stakeholder interests. I think that that's, that's a coherent way of looking at this, where it does put the interest, of, and not on one of the extreme shareholder or stakeholder, but in the context of the company's own health and sustainability and its ability to both generate and preserve value over time. It's a question of multiple, multiple equilibrium. Uh, you, the company, if the company to survive, shareholders uh, need to get returns on capital and be able to reinvest in the company and stakeholders need to be well taken care of. If you, if you have these pieces missing, then there's going to be a problem with the long-term success. So uh, I think that that's pretty consistent with how at least ICGN might frame this question without necessarily grabbing the nettle of this debate head on, because again, that can possibly take you in, in uh, awkward directions. Uh, well, the, the guidance you refer to obviously is um, appropriate to UK companies, but you're suggesting that companies internationally be, would be wise to follow that path. Well, it's a fair point. The UK corporate governance code is made for the UK's environment, and that's not necessarily the same as in other parts of the world. Um, but having said that, I think that uh, I would hope that an investor and, and investors invest often in diversified portfolios uh, with, in companies in many jurisdictions globally. And I think most investors who invest in companies will have an interest in the long-term health and sustainability of the companies they invested in, at least the types of investors that ICGN members represent, because most of our members would be um, either pension funds themselves as asset owners or asset managers managing retirement funds on behalf of pension funds or, 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 or long-term savers. And in this context, if you have this long-term perspective, you think the, the perspective is not only the long-term interest of the beneficiary, but also the long-term health and sustainability of the company in which the beneficiaries have their assets invested.